It's not just mine, his or her house. This is our house. Hello, everyone. This is Tyrone Lowe. Welcome to The Legends. And on my show today, I have the incredible legend, Evelyn Thomas. Evelyn, how are you? Fine. How are you? Thank you for having me. Oh, man, it's an honor to have you. (laughs) So um, let's talk a little bit about you. Let's talk about how you started, you know, from to sing, period, you know. Hmm. I started singing when I was about seven. Okay. And I knew that I would be a singer. I planned for that at seven. And when I got about 13, I joined the band and we traveled all over Chicago. I'm from Chicago. Okay. And uh, when I got about uh, 18, I joined another band. And uh, one of the, the band was called Mood Mixers. And we okay. Chicago did the little nightclubs or whatever you you know, mm-hmm. and um, we we had a rehearsal one day, and one of the guys at rehearsal says, uh, "Did you know that one of the guys in the band are signing a recording contract?" I said, "No, nobody told me anything." <laughs> and he says, "Well, I'm getting ready to go and sign a recording contract too. You want to go for the ride?" I said, "Sure." So we went for the ride. I went for the ride. And uh, it was at Danny Leake's house. I don't know if you know Danny Leake or not. No, I don't, I don't recall that. Mm-mm. Danny Leake is a, a phenomenal producer. He just passed away, uh, I think. Oh, sorry to hear that. Mm-hmm. And he uh, is a producer of Poison. I know you've heard of the group called Poison. Oh, yeah, most definitely, yeah. yeah. So he's a, a great audio engineer. And everybody mm-hmm. knows him in Chicago. Anyway, um, we were at Danny Leake's house, and that's where the interview was being done. And um, Pumpkin, my friend that was in the band, band member, tried out for the contract, but for some reason, Ian Levine, which was an English producer, didn't, he just, I guess they didn't mesh, you know? And so Pumpkin came to me and he says, Evelyn, why don't you try out for the contract? I said, nah. Mm -hmm. I didn't particularly like this guy's attitude because- Okay. Noxious, so to speak. And uh, he says, no, no, you need to try out for the contract. I said, he's not looking for female vocalists. He's, he only wants male vocalists. Mm-hmm. So I got up enough nerve to ask him to listen to me. So I said, uh, Mr. Levine, would you mind listening to me for a future reference? He says, uh, no, I don't want to listen to you. Wow. <laughs> I'm only looking for um, male vocalists at the time. Mm-hmm. And I said to myself, now, I got up enough nerve to ask this man to listen to me. So I'm not going to quit until he listens to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, Danny Leake takes him in the back of the house and says, uh, we'll be right back. They came back five minutes later to make a short, long story short. Mm-hmm. And he says, okay, you got one minute to satisfy me. I said, oh, my God. Anyway, I sung uh, Neither One of Us by Gladys Knight and the Pips. Okay. And I couldn't even get to the chorus because he jumps up off the couch and he goes, oh, you have the most fantastic voice. And, da, 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 da. and so he says, uh, would you like to have a recording contract? I said, sure. Mm-hmm. And that's how it all started. Okay. Yeah. Was, actually, was that your first label that you was actually signed to or? That was, yeah, that was my first label I was actually signed to. But before that, I had done things with... Um, Annie Crockett Ford, she was a, a reverend in Chicago, and I did some uh, recordings with her. And uh, okay, but we never signed any contracts or anything. So, growing up as a singer, you know, what was your who was your earliest influences as far as artists? Who influenced you? I would say people like uh, Dinah Washington. Uh, 
Sarah Vaughn. Jazz singers, actually, because I was, uh, actually, I was a jazz singer before I ever okay. got into dance music. Okay. And what other producers have you worked with since then, you know, through your whole gyro of, uh, you know, through your whole li- legacy? Well, I worked with uh, Bill Curtis with Fatback Band. Okay. I worked with uh, Hans Zimmerman, and he's pretty big. He does all the Lion Kingdom uh, the soundtracks and movie soundtracks. I've worked with um, hmm, quite a few people. I can't even, I have to look back on that. So. Okay. So here's the big question. How did you stumble across high energy? Okay. We did, uh, when I got with Ian Levine, we did this record called Weak Spot. Okay. I had all the leftover records because songs, because all the other artists that were already there, could pick their songs and I had to pick whatever was left over. Right. So Weak Spot became uh, maybe five weeks later after he took it back to London and they mastered it and they mm-hmm. put it out. It became number five on the British charts. And they asked me to come over and do a TV show, uh, which was called Top of the Pops, which is the biggest TV show you can ever do. Mm-hmm. And I uh, went over and I did the show it was with personalities like uh, Andy Williams, the, the Glitter Band, different personalities. And um, from there, because that was a hit, he went back in the studio and they came up with this song called High Energy. And he says, well, I want uh, Evelyn Thomas to actually sing this song. Mm-hmm. The song was produced and written especially just for me. So I went in and I did the song. Didn't think it was going to do anything, to be honest with you. Right. The music over there is so different from the music in the United States. Oh, most definitely, yes. I didn't see where this song was going to go anywhere. (laughs) Not that I didn't have confidence in myself, Mm-hmm. It just sounded so different from the music in the United States, and I didn't. Right. So here again, he calls me and says, Evelyn, you got to come back over to London. Because I said, that record hit again. He says, oh, yeah. So I had to do <laughs> so I had to do Top of the Pops again, and that song just took off. It just took off. It just went everywhere. It went from uh, all over Europe all over France, was number one in France. It was, then it got back to TRS uh, Records and Tom Hayden in mm-hmm. California. And uh, they they put it out and it went all over the United States and it just was a world, worldwide hit. I would call it a royal song because um, we had a station here in the United States called WKTU. and. Right. It was a station that had just started with the disco era. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I started tuning in, they had a, the host, his name was Paco, God bless the dead. And um, this song was being played like every five minutes. I mean, everywhere you went, you heard high energy. You know, <laughs> I got it through the record pool and um, I was like, this record's really, really big, you know? And um, that was the disco era, you know? so. Now that we're into the house era, um, how do you feel? How do you how do you how do you feel about that? I mean, there's a difference between then and now. So let's talk about now. Let's talk about you know now. Well, the house. What do I feel about the house era? I mean, how do you you know how do you? I mean, what's 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 your take on the house thing right now compared to like back it. when you started? I know it's quite I really different. Like house music. House music's been out for for ages. Mm-hmm. I think many people understood what it was at that time, but um, I love house music. As a matter of fact, I'm working with, uh, uh, I'm going to send you something okay. from a friend of mine. Uh, you ever heard of James Lofton? It sounds familiar, yeah. I think yeah, so. James, James is a good friend of mine, and uh, I did a song and sent it to him. I said, why don't you do a house mix on this thing? See what, see what happens. Right. And he did. It's very different from uh, high energy music, of course. Mm-hmm. But I liked it. I like it a lot. So let's talk about your first performance when you had to do your first live performance ever. Um, how did uh, you, how, how, what was going through your head? 
I was jittering. I had to hold my own hands and the microphone. <laughs> My knees were shaking, and <laughs> I, was, I didn't know what to do with myself. Uh, I did a show in New York City. Where was this show? Gloria Gaynor was. Now that's my girl. You know that, right? Yeah. I love her. I love her. Yes. <laughs> and um, I was Gloria Gaynor did upstairs, and I had to do downstairs. Right. And so. Uh, I was just a nervous wreck. I really was. Um, we did High Energy, and I did my album. I actually had an album finished. By right. It. And uh, I did a 45-minute show, which it came mm-hmm. out really good, but I was just a nervous wreck. By any to- chance... Oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. By any chance, did you do Studio 54? Oh, yeah. Many times. Okay. Yeah. I actually did Studio 54 in Belgium uh, about five years ago. They wow. uh, had a big um, uh, anniversary, so to speak, and it was amazing, amazing. I can imagine that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, you know, we're going to take a little break right now, and um, we're going to come back with Evelyn Thomas, and we're going to talk about some current events. Stay tuned. <laughs> Her house. This is our house. We got some fun people in the house tonight. Yeah. 
Welcome back to The Legends. I'm your host, Tyrone Lowe, and we have the fabulous legend, Evelyn Thomas. Evelyn. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about some of your current events that I know there's a, a pandemic going on. So let's talk about some of the things that that you might have been doing right now if there wasn't such a you know thing going on with the pandemic. Well, I would be in France. We were getting ready for a tour in France. Right. Uh, we're getting ready to do probably it was a, a three month tour. Okay. We had to cancel that, of course, because of yeah. The- I, I think everybody was feeling the pandemic uh, sort of thing. Like, um, I have to shoot my show from my studio now. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's different from actually being in a TV studio. But it has its advantages and it has its disadvantages. Yeah. But um, I'm, I thank God that I can still do my show. You know, um, let's talk about, you know, some of the things that uh, might have happened in the past that you had a little downfall with, you know, in your career and that you might be grateful for that you got through it, you know. I'm sure everybody goes through those things. I would say learning the business more. Okay. Uh, that's a that's a very important thing to, to get hold of when you're in the music business. Understanding the business of the music. And um, okay. I think that was sort of a downfall for me until I kind of got a hold of okay. what's going on. Um, other than that, I really didn't have any. I was just going. <laughs> I see that for sure. With a, with, with a lot of high energy. <laughs> I just, you know, um, out and just kept going. You know, I was I was so busy going, Tyrone. I didn't have time to think about something terrible. Or, I mean, I didn't even get sick on the road. I just kept going. I hear that. You know, let's let's uh, tell the viewers, um, especially the new people that are actually entering the craft of recording and being artists. What can you suggest for them? You know, as far as the craft itself, you know, to actually influence them and encourage them. I would say before you get into this business, study it. Study the business itself. Understand. Uh, writing, producing, understand uh, publishing, because that's how a lot of us get paid. Just need to understand the business end of the, the, the industry, because this industry, as far as I'm concerned, is 90% business. And oh, most definitely. You need to understand that. And then just be true to yourself, to what you want to do. Just really... Because what you think people might not like, they probably would like it. And just be true to yourself and have enough confidence in yourself and pray, honey. Just keep going. I hear you. <laughs> so I always ask most of my, you know, my, my people that come on the show, you know, what would you like to be at least five years from now? I'm where, right. where do you see yourself? Where do you see yourself? I'm going to tell you where I see myself, Tyrone. Mm-hmm. I when I sat down with this pandemic thing, which I've been doing for a while for the last ten years, I've been writing a children's series. Okay. Because I'm concerned about the children's mentality right now. There's okay. so many things that have been going on. These kids got to be confused. A lot of them. Mm-hmm. And um, I've been writing this children's series. And I'm almost finished. I do have a publisher that's publishing it. Okay. Um, in five years from now, I would like to see myself sitting in front of somebody, uh, movies set with this series actually being. Uh, okay. <laughs> and what what made you actually what influenced you to actually get into that type of. Uh... Gyro. I've always been a writer of stories. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's just something on the side that I've always, always done. I've got, if you go through all of my notes and little books that I've written, I've got mm-hmm. tons of them. But uh, I finally decided, since I've gotten older, right. you, know, you got to give something back. Right, right. 
It's one thing that the high energy uh, that was great for me. I loved it. Um, mm-hmm. I did quite a few albums. It was all wonderful. Right. But before I leave this earth, I want to know that I have helped somebody or influenced these children to okay. be what they want to be. You know, right. to them to say, you know, I want to do this or I want to do that, and yeah, you can do that. But there is a there there are steps to doing certain things, and so that's what my series is all about to teach them okay. it can be done. Oh, most but, definitely, yeah. Yeah, but there's the method to the madness, so you, <laughs> you have to follow the rules, you know, so to speak. Okay. So today's artists, who do you listen to as far as today's artists, you know, as far as currently? Anybody in particular? You know what? I haven't listened to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I know it sounds crazy, but I haven't, you know. I just, I've been so busy with personal things. Okay. You know, that it's, it's been kind of hard for me to even sit back and relax with that right now. Okay. So let's talk about a new track that you, you was talking about earlier. And uh, did you write it? Did you um, I write did the write lyrics? It. Okay. And who's producing it for you? I actually produced it myself. All right. Yeah. And um, well, that's what's up. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I got it mixed and mastered by James Lofton. Which okay. Is Two House. Okay. His uh, company. And. Um, it's about what's going on right now. Uh, okay. we, we having a lot of hoopla about a lot of stuff here. And uh, it came to me that no matter whether you're black, you're yellow, you're red, you're white, mm-hmm. you're, pink, you're purple, God loves all of us in his sight. We're all love in his sight. And so it's, um, something's got to be done. Something's got to be changed. And I know that God's going to change it. It's a matter of understanding his word and believing that he definitely means what he says. And so it's just, uh, that, that track is, when you hear it, it will remind you of everything that God has rem- told us that we can depend on him for certain okay situations the outcome of the certain situation. Right. Any shout outs to anybody special that you want to shout out to? You know, I just want to shout out to James and shout out to all the fans that have supported me over the years. Thank you so very much for your support. I love you all. And uh, a shout out to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Evelyn. You know, um, I am so glad that you are on my show and um, I'm very flattered and honored to have you on my show. You know, um, I just happened to be listening one day and for some reason, a DJ played your song. And I'm like, I wonder where she's at. You know what I mean? So I just went through what I had to get through to get to you and I finally got (laughs) you and I am so honored, you know. And um, I wish you luck on your current events, Mm -hmm. your traveling, Godspeed. And like I said, viewers, this is Evelyn Thomas, and she's been around for years, and she's truly a legend, and I am flattered to have you on my show. And with this, this is another T-Lo video production, and um, stay tuned for another episode. Thank you guys very much. Thank you for having me. God bless. Okay. All right, Evelyn. It's not just mine, his or her house. This is our house. My assignment, my calling is to inspire, uplift. You have to make sure your people are partying. All I want to do is just bring joy to the dance floor and watch people dance. <laughs> Tino, 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 Tino. <laughs>
and they 